I think of Mark and Brooke as sort of extensions of, of me and my relationship. The chemistry was just instant and obvious, and we sort of realized, particularly in the editing suite when it was all done, we wanted people to be able to sort of see these people living their lives and feel like, you know, even if my husband's not quite as funny as he is, even if my wife isn't quite as pretty as she is, I relate to these people. I've had conversations like these. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, guess who just won 94 bucks at that slot machine? Nice. Oh, let me blow on him. Pardon? The dice, for luck. Is that even allowed? Mr. Dealer? Sure. Try not to spit. The, the ones that work best are the ones that I feel like I just started turning over rocks until I found something, you know, that almost already existed. I didn't have to sit down and engineer a joke. Those are the ones that are based on things that I experience. Mark yelling at the snowman. It sort of looked like you built a snowman out there and then yelled at it. Did you see the way he looked at me? You know, I mean, I, when I was 12 years old, 14 years old, whatever it was, I saw Rocky, um, and after watching the movie, I instantly went out in the backyard, built a snowman, and punched him in the face. And, you know, and I remember having done that, and so now we're doing a spot about the winter blues, and I'm thinking, okay, remember that time I punched a, win a snowman in the face? I can do something with that, you know? We went on to have Mark just yell at the snowman, because I didn't want him to be quite that angry. Or, or weird about it, but, you know, the idea of building a snowman just to yell at it, you know, came out of an experience that I had as a kid. And th there are a lot of those. I mean, the, the anniversary one, you know, I, I uh, have forgotten my share of anniversaries, so I knew what that was about, and, you know, so that was instant fuel that sort of already existed that was very easy to turn into a TV spot. Hey. Welcome home, honey. How was your day? It was pretty good, actually. I stopped by the Northern Quest 10th anniversary celebration. I almost forgot I was at work and just remembered it at the last minute, so. Oh, that would be bad to forget their anniversary. Would have been embarrassing. <laughs> Your folks coming over or something? I don't know. I don't know when it should end. Maybe people that are watching this have an idea of when it should end, but I think that what I know is that every time we go onto the property to shoot another spot, handsfuls of people come and want to meet Mark, want to meet Brooke, want to shake their hands, you know, want to talk to them. The spot that we shot the other day, a swarm of 30 and 40 something year old women just wouldn't leave Mark alone. We finally ended up choosing one and putting her in the spot and you know she couldn't have been more excited to, to be a part of it and as long as you're getting reactions like that I mean, I think it tells you that, you know, there's still, you know, there's still something usable here. I've had really good campaigns over the years die just because people just got tired of reading the same type of script and they just wanted to do something new for the sake of doing something new. So, I mean, I think it's, it's really to Northern Quest credit that, that they have allowed this thing to turn into the, to the, to the sort of big chunk of of usable brand equity that it is. If I can relate to them as a viewer at home, then I'm starting to relate to the brand, maybe without even realizing it, you know, fully. But I just, all those good feelings eventually sort of rub off on the brand and, and I'm a little more likely to maybe come on out and try Maslow's or, or go catch the game at Epic or try my hand at Blackjack, something I've never done. But I saw Brooke try to do it, you know, Mark tried to teach her how to do it and it looked like fun. You know, in some ways, I just think, I think it is a very different style of campaign, especially nowadays. You know, I watch TV and it seems like, you know, most commercials, someone's trying to sell me the next I thing and they're doing it with cool hip music and cool sound effects and all that stuff. And we're not using any of that. We're just telling stories. I mean, it's, it's kind of old school. It's kind of an old fashioned sort of approach, but I think people, particularly now in this digital age, just sort of enjoy just a nice little story.